Uh, my name is Guy Warren. I'm a, an Australian painter, uh, an old friend of Lloyd Rees, um, whom I knew and worked with for a long time in Sydney, uh, a man for whom I have immense um, respect, both as a painter and as a man. He was a man of um, compassion and intelligence and uh, sensitivity, uh, a liberal, wise old man. I've always thought that um, every tribe has a wise old man and I'm not sure that we're very well endowed with wise old men, but I think Lloyd was. He was a wise old man of the tribe and a very good one. I remember one particular occasion which made a significant impact on my life. I'd been, uh, I'd spent eight years in London and I'd been studying there, painting there and working there and had an exhibition there before I came home, um, which didn't sell. I came home broke and I got a job with an advertising agency, which I hated, but uh, it um, kept the family alive. And going home one night on the bus to Greenwich, Longerville, I happened to sit beside Lloyd, whom I knew anyway. And halfway home, Lloyd turned to me and said, how would you like to come and help me teach architecture students, teach them drawing? Um, and I said, sounds like fun to me. Uh, so I really started working with Lloyd. It was only two days a week, but I left the advertising agency immediately. I thought it was much more fun working with Lloyd than with an with a advertising agency. Um, so that particular occasion was quite significant to me, but I had met Lloyd, I think, before that because he lived nearby and we knew each other. And Lloyd had a, um, had a great community awareness. He was aware of himself in the community and did things for the community. And he started, I think it was he who first started the Lane Cove Art Society, which was a society for those artists who lived and worked in Lane Cove. Many of them, uh, not all professionals, but very good amateur people. And uh, inevitably, being Lloyd, once he started something like that, he dragged everybody else in to help him. And you couldn't say no to Lloyd, you know, he's such a lovely old bloke. And at the time, there were lots of artists living in, in uh, Greenwich and Lane Cove area. Rainer Susters, me, um, good heavens, forgotten names, Mari Santry, John Santry, um, Bill Peascod, a whole stack of people. And we all got dragged in by Lloyd to help him hang things and judge things. And so I, I'd known Lloyd, I think, before I had the conversation with him on the bus. Uh, he was full of enthusiasm and it was a delight to get involved with him. Now Lloyd used to come and uh, lecture in the tin sheds as well, as well as in the architecture school. And Lloyd's lectures were superb. Um, <laughs> the fine arts department, which was across the road from us, across the city, across city road, um, used to give lectures as well. But their lectures, I always thought, were very dull and academic. Lloyd's lectures to the architecture students were full of love and enthusiasm. And I can remember students going into Lloyd's lectures and all they wanted to do after they'd finished the lecture was to go out and either look at art or make art. He had that capacity to enthuse people and he didn't do it by any great histrionics. Uh, he did it by sheer love and enthusiasm. One couldn't talk to him about art without by osmosis accepting some of the, the enthusiasm and love that he had. I subsequently ended up uh, working with Sydney College of the Arts, which is now part of Sydney University, it wasn't at the time. And I used to invite, invite people, artists, to come and talk to students there. And I didn't ask Lloyd for a long time because, to be perfectly honest, Lloyd was getting very old and I thought, well, 
I love his work and I love him. How do these young people, are they likely to react to that sort of, that sort of um, art and that sort of person? Which was all very foolish of me, I think, in retrospect, because one day the students came to me and said, could you ask Lloyd Rees? So it was their idea. So I asked Lloyd. So Lloyd came along and he was tickled pink, I think, to come. Um, the room wasn't just packed. The students were literally crawling through the windows trying to get, get into the room and hanging through the windows listening to him. And Lloyd rose to the occasion. I remember he said to me once, do you know, Guy, what I would like to have been if I hadn't been an artist? And I said, no, Lloyd, what? He said, I think I would like to have been in the theatre. And I thought, yes, of course you would, you old bugger, you know. <laughs> That's exactly right, you know. He, he loved an audience and he rose to an audience. So when these kids crowded into the room, asked him questions, he ro rose to it like an old trooper. He really did. He was fantastic. And he talked about everything. He talked about architecture, he talked about art, and he talked about, about cricket. He was a great cricket enthusiast. So the lecture wandered around from cricket to, a, it wasn't a lecture, it was just a talk, you know. It was Lloyd carrying on and he did it superbly well. And at the end of the, end of the uh, lecture, the students all clapped like crazy. And that made him even more enthusiastic. He loved it. So he stood up and he said, the trouble I'm told with you young people is that you are all intolerant. He said, well, and he stood up and he threw, threw his arms in the air. He said, all I can say to you is never lose your sense of intolerance. <laughs> and that brought the house down. Uh, he was great. Wonderful old guy and a very good painter, you know, beyond, beyond all this, beside all this. Uh, more importantly, he was a damn good painter. And he was always kind. He was never, never too critical about students' work. He always supported them. And the most important thing you can do to a student, I've always felt, was to give them confidence, uh, give them knowledge, but to give them confidence. Uh, and Lloyd did that, and he was always kind. He never, he never cut them down to size, as I know some teachers do. I don't know why it's strong in that area, but the fact is that uh, it always has been. Uh, it's a very beautiful part of the world. It's very leafy, if that's the word. Lovely bays, lovely headlands. Uh, and the tradition of making art there has gone on for a few thousand years. You know, there are evidence there of Aboriginal artists working on the rocks around Sydney Harbour and particularly around that, that area. You know, within a walking distance from my home, I can find the work of Aboriginal artists still on the rocks there. So it's something that has been there for a long time. As far as the uh, um, European community is concerned, obviously even in the early days, you could row across the harbour um, if with a pad and a pencil and stand on the rocks there, stand on the headlands there and draw. And the names of the people who've worked around there are the story of Australian art. So it isn't surprising that people like Lloyd, um, Bill Pigeon, um, uh, Roland Wakelin, uh, all worked around that sort of area, that part of the Sydney area. Everybody suffers from depression, yes. and certainly not only artists, but artists do suffer from depression. They suffer from, from doubts all the time. Mm -hmm. You're never quite sure. You know there's a better thing coming up. Um, and if you look back at what other artists have spoken about in the past, you find that they, many of them mention the same thing. The best comment, uh, two comments I can think of, one comes from the American artist, um, uh, Philip Guston, who says, um, um, uh, doubt is the acute awareness of the existence of alternatives. 
And of course he's right, you know, there is always something better which one is trying to achieve. And Bob Hughes was much more to the point, and Bob Hughes writes, uh, wrote, um, the greater the artist, the greater the doubt. Uh, all great artists have great doubts. Perfect confidence, he says, is given to the less talented as a consolation prize. <laughs>